Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily. Today's video is my top 10 color work sweaters in my Ravelry knitting queue. It's going to be a really fun one today, so thank you so much for joining me. I have filmed how many of these and in that whole time, it never crossed my mind that I'm just talking and I could be knitting. <laughs> so while we're talking about this, I'm going to be working on my muscle bra hat. It's a pattern from You Sold a Teague and it looks like a big, huge lump, but uh, I'm gonna be working on it. So before we jump into all of those fun patterns, though, there are some places you can find me on the internet. Birchandlilyfiber.com is my website, and my Instagram is at birch.and.lily. And yeah, let's jump on in. Hopefully the lighting stays not too bad for this video, though you'll be looking at the photos I put on the side anyways. So that's kind of why I filmed this video second. Usually I film a podcast video and a pattern video in the same day so that I only have to film every couple weeks. <laughs> um, but today I ended up having to film a little late because my husband was uh, working from home, which he usually doesn't do on Mondays. So that is besides the point. <laughs> Let us jump on in to all of those wonderful patterns. Um, oh, no. First, I'm wearing my Pink Fizz. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. I knit this out of Woolberry Fiber Co. I can't remember the colorway, um, but I think I held Fingering and Surrey together to knit this up. Beautiful pattern. Would totally knit it again, um, especially because this one had some striping going on, which was my fault. Um, I ordered the yarn out of two batches, which I should not have done. So then they were quite different when I started knitting with them and is what it is. Anyways, you're not here for my rambling today, which apparently is what I'm doing. You are here to hear about beautiful color work patterns. <laughs> so in no particular order, let us jump on in. The first pattern is the Lumi from Sari Nordland. I want to knit this one so bad. I don't carry worsted weight yarn in my shop, but I literally just ordered a whole bunch of bases to test them out and figure out a worsted weight yarn that I like because I want to knit this sweater. <laughs> the Illumi is knit, like I said, out of worsted weight yarn. Its gauge is about 18 stitches by 24 rows. Um, so that would equal a four inch square. When I talk about gauge in these videos, everything, um, the measurements I give for gauge will all equal a four inch square, if I forget to say that. The pattern it does come with nine sizes with a recommended ease of two to five inches or five to seven and a half centimeters. Those nine sizes do range from a 31.5 inch bust to a 63 inch bust in centimeters. That is 80 to 160 centimeters. Now this pattern, I'm sure you're looking at the photo right now, but it's stunning. Um, the floral motif is so beautiful and I just love the le like the leaves on it too and the fact that it's on the cuff and I just feel like there's so many different things you could do with this sweater. I've seen a lot of people knit not just with the two colors, um, but use different colors for the leaves and different colors for the color work flowers and like really, really customize the garment too. So I just think there's a lot you can do with it. Um, and it comes in a really big size range and it's knit top down. That I think is something I really, I'll knit a bottom up sweater, but I gravitate towards top down ones because I can try them on. Um, a bottom up, I just, it's so hard to try on a bottom up sweater. Um, you can kind of guess and you can measure other sweaters that you have knit and like hope <laughs> that you've got it right. But I end up usually knitting my bottom up sweaters too short <laughs> and I end up with a cropped sweater, more cropped than I was originally intending. So I love that this is knit top down. It is a yoked sweater. It's not a raglan. Um, so if you don't like how a yoked sweater fits, this one probably isn't for you. But otherwise, I just think there's no way to stay bored. With I say this with all of these pattern videos, but with this color work, there's no way to stay bored. Like even you hit sleeve island and you're tired of knitting sleeves, but you're going to know that you have that color work on the cuff to make, I don't know, it'll just make it less 
monotonous, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like you have something to look forward to. So beautiful, beautiful pattern. Sorry really knows what she's doing and I love it. Um, second pattern. This one's also been in my queue for a really long time. This is the Great Gingham Sweater. It is a raglan sweater and shame on me, I didn't write down who it is made by. Um, I will have that on the screen. I'm so sorry. Um, but the Great Gingham is a beautiful sweater pattern. This one is knit bottom up though, unfortunately, but it's really cute. <laughs> so it made the cut despite that. So the sweater does call for sport weight yarn. Um, I think you could get away with a DK. The gauge is 22 stitches by 26 rows. Um, and I have knit DK sweaters with that gauge as well. So I think it's pretty versatile in that way. Um, kind of just have to pick the yarn that you know you can get that gauge with. So the sweater is available in many sizes, uh, extra small through 5X with an ease of about three and a half inches to eight and a half inches or nine to 21 and a half centimeters um, and bust measurements for the sizes, the extra small to the 5X, um, about 28 inches to 60 inches or 71 to 152 and a half centimeters. So really wide size range on this one as well. Um, beautiful pattern. I think there's a lot of ways you could customize this one as well. The uh, pattern does come with customizations itself. Um, so it does have options to knit and it tells you how to knit a cropped version, a longer version, um, how to knit longer or shorter sleeves. I do think there may also be a couple neckline options included in the pattern as well. Um, so lots that you can do there, but I also, I've seen some people knit this pattern where the main color, so the color they use for like the collar and the cuffs and the hem. Um, they use a solid color for that one, but then for the contrast color, they'll use something color changing, like say spin cycle yarn, or even just a really beautiful variegated yarn. And I think it just adds such a pretty interest to like the, the classic plaid pattern, the gingham. So I just, I feel like it's really versatile. Um, I haven't knit many sleeves bottom up, this sweater is knit that way. Um, like I said, the body is knit bottom up, but the sleeves are also knit bottom up. Um, the only sweater I've knit that way, I think is the Nurtured by Andrea Mowry. Um, and I wouldn't be too concerned about that because while the designer's name is slipping my mind, I do know their patterns come with loads of information. So um, and great pattern support as well. So I think even if you were to get a little confused about how to do that, you'd have plenty of help at your disposal. So I wouldn't be too worried, but yeah, a really cute pattern. Um, I think if, when, not if I knit it, when I knit it, I definitely want to knit it. I want to do like a really cropped version that I could wear with a pair of high-waisted jeans. Pattern number three is the Autumn Court by Dragon Horde Designs. Tristan Molina of Dragon Horde really knows what she's doing with color work um, and she's got some really unique color work that I haven't seen a lot of places. I believe this pattern is designed based off of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, um, so based off of the Autumn Court, but I just think it's really, really pretty. It is knit out of fingering weight yarn with a gauge of 27 stitches by 38 rows, and it's available in 11 sizes. Um, so the sizes that you have here range from a 30 and a half inch to a 66.25 inch bust. Um, that is 77 and a half to 168 and a half centimeters. And the pattern does call for about two to four inches of positive ease, that's about five to 10 centimeters. It uses four different colors. So I think it would be a great way to bust some of those single skeins of fingering weight yarn we all have lying around in our stash um and it's in a top down <laughs> like I said I 
I have a special place in my heart for a top down sweater. It is a chalk down yoked sweater, so it doesn't have any raglan shaping, um, but that makes it really easy to put in some really intricate and beautiful color work, which is what Tristan has done here. There is color work on the yoke, the cuffs, and the hem of the garment. So I really like that. It's kind of pulled all those beautiful colors that you're gonna choose throughout the whole garment and you're not gonna get bored. You're not gonna get bored. So another really beautiful one. Um, fingering weight, of course, knits up a little slower, but when you've got beautiful color work included in a fingering weight sweater, I think it really speeds the process up. So this is the only cardigan that I have pulled for this episode. And as I was reading the uh, description and the pattern for it, I did learn it is a steaked cardigan, which is something I've never done, but I've always kind of wanted to do, but I'm also really scared to do. <laughs> so if you're brave and you want to try steaking, this is so pretty. Andrea really knows what she's doing with her patterns. Um, and... I love this one. I just love this one. So it is a worsted weight pattern. The gauge is 20 stitches by 22 rows to create a four inch square of knitted fabric. Um, and it comes in nine sizes, a 34 inch to 66 inch bust or a 86 and a half centimeter to 167 and a half centimeter finished garment bust size. Um, it calls for about two to six inches of positive ease. So that's about five to 15 centimeters of positive ease. And I just, I don't know, I, something about the big cozy collar on this and that you can tie it up. Um, you knit a little tie for it and I don't know, does it have pockets? I don't think it has pockets that's okay. Um, there's so much beautiful color work on it that you don't really need pockets. You can just wear pants with pockets when you're wearing this one. Um, but it's super, super pretty. It is a raglan construction. So it's going to fit your shoulders really, really well. Um, and it's knit bottom up. I don't know if I've ever knit a raglan sweater bottom up. Um, but Andrea has beautifully written patterns, lots of information available for you. So you have no reason to be scared knitting a bottom up raglan. You have no reason to be scared of steaking. She has video tutorials included in her patterns and all sorts of information. So no reason to be scared. <laughs> um, this one, I do believe she uses spin cycle yarns for this one as well. Um, and spin cycle is a really interchangeable yarn. I do believe it calls itself sport, but as you can see, she's, oh no, they have a worsted weight base as well. Um, but it is still really interchangeable. I've seen her use, um, spin cycle as a, like the sport the one they classify as sport. I've seen her use it as a fingering weight. I've seen her use it as a DK. So I'm assuming um, that the worsted spin cycle would kind of be the same way. Um, but it would be really pretty to use this with just like a variegated yarn too. Or there are a lot of yarns on the market now that are similar to spin cycle. I've seen some at my local yarn shop that are a little bit more affordable of options. Granted, if you took um, and used a more affordable yarn for your main color and just splurged on a couple of spin cycle skeins for this cardigan, I think that would be fun as well. So lots of options with this one. Um, and like I said, Andrea has got you covered with her patterns. They're really detailed and well-written. I do have two patterns now from the same designer. Her name is Rachel Eelsley. Um, and both of these are so pretty and very different, very different. So the first one I pulled is called Burning. It is a fingering weight pattern with a gauge of 28 stitches by 34 rows. This pattern does come in sizes extra small through 5XL with finished bust measurements of about 32 inches to 64 inches or 81.5 centimeters to 162.5 centimeters. Um, and it calls for about four to eight inches of positive ease at the bust. That's about 10 to 20 and a half centimeters of positive ease. It does use a main color and three contrast colors. And I think just looking at the photo here, you could totally get away with using fingering weight scraps for some of those contrast colors. 
Um, they're not used a ton, but they're definitely used in a really impactful way. And you also mixed in amongst the color work, do some textured stitches with your main color. Um, so it's really cool just kind of how she's incorporated the two different types of knitting together to make one really cohesive and beautiful garment. It does have a little bit of color work around the cuffs as well. Um, and it's, it's just really, really delicate. So it's knit as a top down yoke in the round. It's got really cute, they're, they're balloon sleeves, I would say, but really, um, mo modest, not modest, um, understated balloon sleeves and it's just got a really sweet cropped fit um i do think the pattern page on ravelry which will be down below in the description i don't know if i said that but i do link all of the patterns down below in the description um but i do believe the pattern page does give you the exact measurements of the model um and kind of tells you what ease and stuff the model in the photo has with her garment too so I appreciate that just to kind of get an idea of how it would fit um with a certain amount of ease because I think sometimes that can be a little hard to envision so along with the burning sweater Rachel Ilsley also has the petrichor sweater that I absolutely love this one is all over fingering but it's done so well and it's still it's not in your face. It's really delicate and classic, I think. It's almost like a chevron sort of motif or arrow, um, but it's put together in such a way that I just really, really like it. It's beautiful. The color work is, like I said, all down most of the sleeves and most of the body. There is a small portion at the end of both the sleeves and the body that's plain stockinette. Um, but something about color work, if the whole sweater's color work, you're not going to want to put it down. So this pattern um, is also knit in fingering weight yarn with a gauge of 28 stitches by 34 rows. It comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. Um, and finished bust measurements are from 32 inches to 64 inches or about 81.5 centimeters to 162.5 centimeters. And the ease that this pattern calls for is about four to eight inches or 10 to 20.5 centimeters. So it is, like I said, knit with only two colors. I do think this sweater leans itself towards adding more colors in as well. Kind of like the Lumi sweater from Sari Nordlin. Um, you could kind of pick out certain motifs and maybe use some different colors throughout the sweater, which I think would be quite fun. Um, but also just the two colors is really striking as well. It does have twisted rib throughout the pattern, but obviously that's something that's super customizable. If you don't want your cuffs to be knit with twisted rib, you can easily switch it to something else. This sweater is knit with another top-down yoke construction, and the Ravelry pattern page does uh, also state that the colorwork patterns are really simple repeating motifs, so it should be something that, while you have to pay attention to it, it's not too complicated, and I think that's a nice mix between a plain stockinette sweater and a colorwork sweater, a nice uh, stopping point in between the two, so really pretty. Definitely want to knit this, but uh, I cast too many things on and sign up for too many test knits. So that's kind of why I'm sharing these patterns with you so I can hopefully live vicariously through your color work sweater knitting. <laughs> if you haven't knit much color work before, this sweater might be for you. This is the Night Heron, a pattern by Andrea Gone. And it is a, another fingering weight pattern. Its gauge is 26 stitches by 30 rows. Comes in 10 sizes. You're looking at a finished bust circumference of about 34 to 70 inches or 85 to 175 centimeters with a call for ease of about four inches or 10 centimeters of positive ease. This one's got real simple color work, really simple. If you haven't knit color work before, this is your sweater. You're still gonna have to watch, obviously, your tension and make sure that your floats aren't too tight, but it's just a really simple one by one color work pattern. So I think a great way for you to figure out color work or maybe work on your first color work garment as opposed to like a color work 
cowl or something. Um, I think this one's another one where you could easily go and substitute in lots of colors. The sample is knit just with two different colors, but because it's split up into a whole bunch of different striped motifs, I think you could throw in multiple contrast colors and really make a fun pattern on your garment as well. So another sweater I guess that would be great for stash busting. It has a really beautiful classic crew neck and a circular yoke. It's knit top down. Um, and yeah, it just has a really simple, beautiful textured look that I think would be a nice staple in anyone's wardrobe. This next pattern here I pulled is another one that would be a great stash buster. This is the Snow Pine by Woolen Pine. <laughs> and I pulled this one because I have so many fingering weight skeins where I have like three, two or three skeins, um, which really isn't enough to knit a whole garment. But this garment uses three different colors of fingering weight yarn in a way that I think I would be able to use up those like random two or three skein collections. Um, it's really beautiful. And it's got really, really simple color work as well. So I don't know if I would say this one's a beginner knit because it is intarsia color work which is something I've never done before, but I would really like to try. When color work is knit with intarsia, you end up having to knit the garment flat and then connect it together in some way. This pattern, um, I believe it has a special technique to join it in the round after you knit every flat row so that you're not having to seam the garment, but I do think that makes it a little bit more of an advanced knitting pattern. But Besides that point, it comes in many sizes, 12 different sizes. You're looking at a finished bust circumference of about 31 to 65 inches or about 79 to 165 centimeters with a called for ease of about two to eight inches or five to 20 and a half centimeters of positive ease. So this is knit top down. It is all over color work, like I said, um, but knit in a raglan style flat. So really good fit. I find raglans, I haven't heard many people who don't say raglans fit them well. Like there's just something about the seaming. Um, it sits really nicely on a shoulder and it doesn't slip off too easily. So. I think it would have a beautiful fit on anyone. There is also a note on the Ravelry pattern page to encourage you. Um, there is no color work purling at all in this. So while you are knitting flat, they ensure that every purling row, you don't have any color work to do. So there's no need to worry about um, knitting flat and then also having to knit color work on the wrong side. So I appreciate that, that they put some thought into that as well. The sleeves are worked in the round though, so you're not going to have to knit those flat. You can knit the sleeves in the round. And yeah, like I said, a really, really great stash buster. It calls for one main color and two or more contrast colors, so I think you could really have some fun and play around with color with this one. The next pattern that I pulled, unfortunately, is not terribly size inclusive, but it is a free pattern, so I did want to include it because I do think it's beautiful, and I do think you might also be able to take the color work charts and plug them into a different pattern. So this is the Finch Feral sweater from Marie Wallen. It's knit out of fingering weight yarn with a gauge of about 37 stitches by 32 rows. And it's available in sizes small through extra, extra large. The pattern doesn't state any recommended ease, which I thought was a little strange. But like I said, it's a free pattern, so it is kind of lacking on a little information. I think Marie Wallen... Um, her knitting patterns are kind of all that way where they expect you to know what you're doing <laughs> pretty well um, and just kind of give you the bare bones of the pattern. So like I said, size small through extra extra large, that's about a 32 inch bust to a 50 inch bust or 81 to 127 centimeters. So like I said, um, it is missing some of those larger sizes, which is unfortunate. Um, it is knit flat. And this one, you would have to do color work on the wrong side of the knitting. So it's definitely more of an advanced pattern, but the color work is so pretty. And like I said, I think you could take that color work and plug it into something else. I think it would make a beautiful sock. Or if you plugged it into and made just like a simple cowl, um, I think 
the possibilities are endless with the chart itself maybe not so much the knitting pattern and the final pattern i pulled i guess not technically the final because i do have a bonus one um, that I just couldn't help but include. But the final pattern that is not a bonus is the Dot Sweater Adult. It is a pattern by Pernille Larson. I do believe she is the designer for the Knitting Olive or Knitting for Olive. Apologies. Um, but beautiful pattern. I think while my theme was color work sweaters, I also was pulling a lot of sweaters that I thought would be fun for stash busting because I kind of want to do that myself a little bit. <laughs> um, but this pattern is knit. It calls for sport weight yarn. I think you could as well with this one get away with DK weight yarn. The gauge is 23 stitches by 28 rows and I've knit um, DK sweaters with that gauge before. So I think you could totally convert it in that way. Um, the sport weight yarn though that they call for is actually made by holding fingering weight yarn and mohair together. Um, so you could also go that route, but um, I think it would be beautiful without holding the Surrey as well or the mohair. Um, I'm a Surrey lover, so my mind goes straight to Surrey. But beautiful pattern. It is just overall dots all over the sweater. And I think you could pull all sorts of scrap yarn from your stash. Actually, I think it would be really beautiful if you were to use fingering white yarn and use a cream color for your main color and also have a cream colored Surrey and then hold that cream colored Surrey with all of your colorful scraps and it would kind of marl everything together. I think that would be really, really pretty. Um, this pattern does not have any ease stated either, um, but it does have lots of sizes. So that's good. It has um, sizes extra small through 4XL um, and finished bust measurements are anywhere from 34 and 3 quarter inches to 59 inches or 88 to 150 centimeters. It's another beautiful raglan pattern um a really deep raglan so you're going to get that dad sweater fit almost i think um but it'll be a really nice cozy squishy stash buster for sure okay like i said i pulled a bonus pattern i couldn't help myself if you are new to this channel i am a corgi lover i have a corgi her name is leia um and i saw this pattern um gypsy bird I can't remember what her podcast is called, Gypsy Bird something. I will link her down below. And actually, I'm going to make a note of that right now. Is it Gypsy Bird Makes, maybe? Anyways, she knit this sweater because she also has a quirky. Um, and I just thought it was so cute. And it's not terribly size inclusive, but I still wanted to include it. Um, I think you could kind of convert the size by knitting it with maybe some larger yarn or a larger gauge. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done a lot of sweater hacking, but it is also lacking in instructions. So I think maybe kind of along the lines of the Finch Fair Isle sweater, you could maybe plug this um, chart into some other stuff as well, but it's so cute. Anyways, this is the Quirky Sweater by Rose Marine, I'm going to say. Um, it does call for DK white yarn with a gauge of 27 stitches by 32 rows which that does not sound like DK to me. That sounds like fingering white gauge. I guess DK can be quite a broad term, so I make sure I give you the gauge measurements so you kind of have an idea what you're working with, um, and also link the pattern down below in the description. Uh, this only comes with sizes small through extra large, so that's kind of why I included this as a bonus. Um, it also doesn't have an ease stated on the pattern, um, but it says you're finished Bust measurements will be anywhere from 37.8 to 46 inches or 96 to 117 centimeters. It is a top down yoke, um, but it doesn't have, like I said, much info given um, or anything. <laughs> it just, it's, it's lacking in information, but uh, it's so cute. I feel like if you feel like hacking one of your favorite yoke sweaters and plugging this chart into it somehow, it'd be really cute. Or take it and make a cowl. Or a sock. Corgi socks are cute. Anyways, I just, it's so cute and I love my dog so much. 
that I could not help myself. Man, it's getting dark. I've been filming for <laughs> 36 minutes now. I started when the sun was kind of sort of here and now you can see my lights in the window. So I apologize for that. But um, thankfully this video includes many photos and you're not really looking at my face. So that doesn't matter too much. Anyways, that is all of the patterns that I have pulled for you this episode. I have got lots of knitting done while we've been talking. I hope you have as well. Um, and make sure you join me for my regular podcast episode next week. I upload every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate if you did. And yeah, I will see you again very, very soon. Bye. Oh. Mm -hmm.